Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Thomas More. We are happy that you've joined us for Mass today. We have these announcements. Our free trade coffee, chocolates, and teas have now been moved into a tidy shelf display in the gathering space next to the welcome table. Please visit the display and support our Social Justice Commission's efforts to promote ethically produced products, safe working conditions, and fair pay. Profits from fair trade sales also benefit many of our local agencies that help those in need. Next weekend is our monthly Last Shall Be First food pantry collection. You may drop off non-perishable food items in the bins located in the gathering space as you come to Mass. The first St. Thomas More Dance Marathon will take place Saturday, October 8th. Stop by the table in the gathering space to sign up to volunteer. Now, please stand and greet those who are around you as we prepare to celebrate this Mass together. Good evening. Good evening. Let's come together in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. St. Paul tells us in the second reading today that Jesus has <laughs> forgiven our sins, nailing them to the cross. With confidence then in his mercy as we come together, celebrate Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you reconcile us to one another and to God the Father. Lord, have mercy. 
you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with God our Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast to even now those things that endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sins so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, The Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find fifty innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. 
See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than fifty innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only forty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty there. Still Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than twenty? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. But he still persisted. Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. day I called for help, you answered me, you answered me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me, you answered me. A reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, Excuse me. <laughs> Having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. 
he also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they fall. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John the Baptist taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name your kingdom come give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test and he said to them suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up and give it to him, whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, teach us to pray. The disciples see Jesus praying. They want some of that wonderful relationship, that intimacy that Jesus has with God the Father. And they say, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. You know, what's wonderful is uh, it, it tells us one thing about prayer. It's a relationship, a relationship with God. That's what they recognize Jesus has with God the Father, and they want that. That relationship that gives a sense of security, gives a sense of peace. And so what does Jesus do? He teaches the Lord's Prayer. You know, uh, many commentaries have been written through the centuries about the Lord's Prayer. I could go through every line, and there, there's a meaning and great wisdom in, in so much of it. It's hot out, though. I, I won't. <laughs> I could go forever. I won't. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I think the most important thing is to understand that Jesus is telling us we can have that same intimate relationship with God the Father that he has. And that is what prayer is all about. Growing in that relationship that gives us a sense of direction, that gives us a sense of peace. 
You know, I, I think too often we look at prayer not as something that helps us grow in a relationship with God, but, but more of a magic formula that, that allows us to get what we want. You know, we, we laugh at that story, but the one about the man who uh, was late for a real important meeting is actually the, the business depended upon that meeting and, and him getting there, and, and he drove around the block twice and could not find a parking place. Finally says to God, give me a parking place. And I promise, I'll stop drinking, I'll stop cussing, <laughs> you'll see me in church every Sunday. He pulled around the corner and there was a parking space right in front of him and he looks up and says, sorry God, I did it by myself. <laughs> I found it myself. <laughs> you know, I, I think sometimes that's the way we treat our prayer life. You know, we ask God for those favors that, that we, we think we need and want and, and then move on. But what happens when God doesn't give us those things that we want? I think Jesus says the importance is to be persistent, to be persistent, to continually seek, to continually knock. I'm told that the, the, the translation of ask and seek and knock, really it means to keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. Don't quit. And that's the point of that, that story that Jesus is, tells. If, if we have a close relationship with God, then those things don't come automatically necessarily, but God in his own way does allow us to receive. You know, Abraham in the first reading is a good example. The uh, book of Genesis tells that story of, of Abraham and it shows that he really does have a personal relationship with God. He, he kind of haggles with God like you would in a Middle Eastern marketplace. He asks God to save the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, if there are 50 innocent people, all the way down to 10, you know, you wonder what would have happened if Abraham would have kept bargaining. It's almost comical. But uh, we're told that there were four innocent individuals, Lot, his wife, and two daughters, four people who were spared but it's common for all of us to say things like that. I, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed to win the Mega Million last night, you know? I didn't even get one number right, you know? <laughs> and even more seriously, maybe, I prayed for someone who was very ill and a loved one to recover, and they passed away anyway. What, what does it mean, ask, and it will be given you? I asked, and I didn't get it. Well, part of the answer, I think, might be something in the way we understand God and God's time. Remember that movie, Rudy, uh, about the young man, Rudy Rudebaker, Rudy, whatever it was. <laughs> I've lost it now. But who playing, wanted to play for Notre Dame, and, and after working and praying, finally he visits this wise priest at the University of Notre Dame, and the priest says to him this, praying is something we do in our time. Praying is something we do in our time. The answers come in God's time. That's wise. The answers come in God's time. We don't understand God's time. We, we want instant results, don't we? It doesn't mean God doesn't hear our prayers. It doesn't mean God doesn't answer our prayers. Maybe at least not in the way that we think God should answer our prayers. Maybe he's answering it in another way and we just don't recognize it. But why we need to continue to be persistent in prayer and to be patient. You know, it's an easy explanation to say that, that God heard the prayer, but God said no. And maybe that's true. But more than likely, God heard the prayer, and maybe God wants something even better than what we imagined, something we right now just can't understand. Many of our prayers, maybe they look like they go unnoticed. Sick people remain sick. Poor people remain poor. Does it mean God doesn't care about them? No, I don't think so. But maybe God is putting the responsibility on us. Remember that wonderful prayer of St. Thomas More, our patron. St. Thomas More said, Lord, help us to work for the things that we pray for. And how true that is. Our human initiative is important. Help us to work for the things that we pray for. You know, uh, Another thing that's really important to emphasize, I said I wasn't going to talk about every line of the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. How about if I just talk about one word? 
And that one word is Father. Father. When, when Jesus uses the word Father, scholars say in Aramaic, the word that he actually uses is closer to what a kid would call their dad in an affectionate way, Daddy. An affectionate way of saying that. And you can imagine what that must have been like for a Hebrew people who thought that the, the name of the Lord should almost be unmentioned. He's that far in the, uh, the, 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 the infinite that we shouldn't even mention the grandeur of God to, to say, call him by name and, and have that intimate relationship. What's Jesus say? He's daddy. <laughs> I mean, a wonderful relationship. And that's what he tells us that we have. That's the love that God has for us. Much greater than we can ever understand or ever comprehend. You know, in, in the months before uh, my dad died, uh, he started to get sick, and, and we knew that the end was near. I, my brother had a conversation with him, my brother, Father Nick, and I might have even shared this before, but, but Nick asked him, uh, Dad, are, are you ready to see Jesus? My dad was a man of very few words, and he said, yes, yeah. <laughs> and Nick said, well, what are you going to say to Jesus when you meet him? And dad said simply, hi. <laughs> You know, I think there's something wonderful about that. There's something wonderful, and I hope that each and every one of us, I hope that I, when I meet God, have the ability and a relationship with him that I can say what you'd say to a friend, hi, <laughs> and greet them in a way that shows that you've been greeting him every day. I hope that we can continue to do that and grow in a relationship with God through Jesus and the Holy Spirit that allows us to keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. God never abandons us. And on the days when we call for help, God in his wisdom does answer us, even if it is in ways that we don't understand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Learning from Jesus how to pray, we bring our needs, prayers for all our brothers and sisters. For the church, its leaders, and all its members, that like Abraham, we may grow in our friendship with God and honestly present our needs to God every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that God will guide them in addressing the issues of inflation, violence, and the care of creation so that all may live in safety, find housing, and have food. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for peace, that God will turn hearts away from violence, bring an end to the warfare in Ukraine and Syria, and protect the vulnerable from harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For health and healing, that God will curtail the new COVID variants, heal those who are ill, and protect those most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For good weather, for safety from storms, for relief where there is excessive heat and drought, and for good growing conditions that will enable farmers to feed a hungry world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our faith community, for the prayers in our Book of Intentions, and for all the prayers we pause to mention in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father, holy is your name. We place our needs before you with confidence in the love you have for us, and we present them to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, those, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. So now with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Oh, 
Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith <clears throat> We proclaim your death O Lord and confess Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now formed by divine teaching and at the Savior's own command, we can pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but we say the word of my soul. Of your 
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, Melissa is... Uh, at a table there by the welcome table and by the new uh, fair trade display, uh, soliciting volunteers for the dance marathon. So volunteers, please see Melissa after mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thanks be to God. Live our lives so that all might see that our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. Let us build your kingdom in truth and grace so that all might know they have a rightful place. Beauty ever ancient and new. Breaking through our deafness so we hear you, shattering the darkness of night. A new dawn is rising to bring your light to all the world. Let us build our lives so that all might see that our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. Let us build your kingdom in truth. by the body of Christ, taking up the call now to share your life with all the world. Let us live our lives so that all might see that our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. Let us build our kingdom in truth. Yeah. 